Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today we will be talking through vaginal pH and how it impacts the pelvic floor muscles specifically. So Kathy, tell us a little bit, just as a pelvic floor physical therapist, I want to know how you would assess the vaginal pH in your clinic. Absolutely, Melissa. So I know that we all learn about the AMSALS criteria and in an ideal world, you know, we would be looking under the microscope and probably doing the pH testing as well when we take the sample to the lab to look under the microscope. That's ideal. And then we all know what happens in real time in the clinic when you have so many patients back to back. So I have actually found it super helpful to take the pH paper into the exam room with me. And I actually either take a sample from the vestibule, from the vagina, put it on the paper, let it give it its time to, you know, change the color in the way it's going to change while I'm start, like doing the rest of my exam. And so just, to, you know, we know that the vaginal pH should be 3.8 to 4.5. And that pH paper is really helpful in helping us distinguish, like, is everything functioning properly? Are we a nice, healthy, acidic vagina full of a lot mm -hmm. of lactobacilli? Or is the pH getting elevated and becoming more alkaline? And I know something I never thought about was what does that mean? Like, okay, it might mean they may have BV, um, yeast, trick, maybe, but I know, Melissa, I certainly never put the pieces together that that change in the vaginal pH could have a huge impact on the pelvic floor muscles. Mm -hmm. So from the pelvic floor physical therapy perspective, mm -hmm. I would love to learn more about that. Yeah. So like just really simplified when the pH is not at its, you know, optimal level that will create inflammation in that whole vestibule and the main nerve, the pudendal nerve that innervates kind of that whole area can become really um, inflamed and irritated. And when that happens, that kind of cascades throughout the pelvic floor muscles causing hypertonicity as a response, um, and just generalized, you know, pain or bladder issues, sexual dysfunction, bowel, um, just because those muscles are responding to, to that inflammation. Um, they're so close. I mean, they create the whole opening. Um, so when, when it's not, when things aren't optimal, then they're really going to not function well. So inflammation is very powerful on all levels and especially for internal muscles. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe. Please share with your colleagues and comment below to let us know your biggest challenges in teaching your patients about vaginal pH. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide Four tips for managing your challenging pelvic exam. You'll get access to our free weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we post more pelvic health tips. We're super excited to announce that we're developing an online pelvic floor course for nurse practitioners. That's going to have a big part about vaginal pH. Woohoo! So it's going to break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize pelvic health. We'll see you soon.